Hello and welcome to you talking to me. The interior ministers have failed to reach an agreement to relocate 40,000 refugees who are currently located in Greece and Italy. They only managed to reach an agreement on more than 32,000 people. So the fate of the 8,000 people are still uncertain. So what, why this failure and what is the consequence for the European Union and also for the EU southern countries? That's the discussion we will have with my two guests. Shada Islam, Director of Policies of Friends of Europe. Hello. Hello. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you. And also Peter Klapp, you Director of the Think Tank Open Europe in Brussels office. Hello and welcome both of you. So, to a refugees quota scheme proposed by the Commission, I mean, has failed. I mean, the, the fate now of less than 8,000 migrants are still uncertain. So, this was supposed to be a relief for the EU southern countries, such as Italy and Greece, who are facing a big flow of migrants crossing the Mediterranean Sea. So, Mrs. Islam, uh, is this showing a lack of solidarity in Europe? It's showing a lack of solidarity in Europe, but it's showing a l much more than that. It's showing Europe's inward-looking mentality at the moment, the fact that Europeans are really quite frightened of the world outside and of accepting people from the world outside. Uh, don't forget that the people who are knocking on our doors in Europe are coming from war-stricken lands. Mm, wars so that are being people. Well, those are, those are countries that are failing states, and you have Syria, Iraq, uh, and, of course, countries in that region as well. So where we're actually actually showing a disregard for our basic values. Europe says it's a tolerant society, that it's inclusive, that it is open to people who are suffering discrimination and are victims of all kinds of nasty things, including war in the rest of the world. Uh, and we're shutting our doors on these and we're doing it in a very, very callous and uh, I would say indifferent way. So yes, lack of solidarity within Europe, but lack of solidarity with the rest of the world as well. Mm. Do you think, uh, Mr. Clapper, do you also agree with me? Is this Islam that a fear is behind all this lack of solidarity? Uh, yes, definitely. Migration is a, a very contentious issue. I would say not just in Europe, but in every um, every country in the world, almost. Uh, now, what the European Commission proposed was to force uh, member states to take in refugees. Now. This is not very wise. Uh, if there's one issue in politics that's, that's very uh, sensitive, it's, it's migration. Um, also, if you force uh, uh, Poland to take in refugees, uh, Poland is in the Schengen zone. So it doesn't make any sense because these people can just uh, travel uh, to another country. Well, what I would like to warn for is the idea that um, um, we need to convince the people that they are so wrong about not wanting to take in uh, migrants. Uh, I think this is just a fact, a given, and um, uh, I think it's good to have migration, it's good to help refugees, but there's a reality that there's a, a bridge which is impossible uh, to, to bridge between basically the needs. They have 50 million refugees in this world, and what Western countries, but also other countries, I would say, are willing to take on. Now, I think it's important to accept this reality mm -hmm. and then to, to try to find uh, solutions based on that. If I may say one more thing, and I think the solution would then need to lie if we really want to help these people, taking into account the unwillingness of Western countries to take in refugees, we need to provide welcoming centers outside of the West and make sure that these welcoming centers are not as horrible as Australia's refugee camps, but proper, mm. um, okay. nice places where people can go. Uh, do you think, Mrs. Islam, a mandatory quota system should have been better than just leaving that to the country themselves will? Well, I think I have to say when uh, Jean-Claude Juncker came up with the idea and, you know, he presented it, I thought it was quite a courageous decision to be taken by the Commission, which so far has actually been quite a laggard in terms of immigration and uh, refugees and asylum seekers. So I thought it was quite a brave idea, given the current temperature in Europe. You know, uh, you talk, Peter, about the reality. Well, the reality is being manipulated by the far right, and mainstream politicians are playing into the far right's xenophobic and racist agenda. They're really playing into it rather than rejecting it with facts. Uh, they're playing into the fiction and allowing hysteria to take over when you have to discuss this mm. in a rational manner, because uh, the West is not the only place where refugees are going. Um, Syria, Iraq, Re Lebanon, Turkey, 
Afghanistan. I mean, Pakistan, our refugees are all over. And it's not just the West. The West is taking a minimum amount of refugees mm. in, actually. So I think it was, a, it was a courageous idea, but I always felt it would never fly because the mood as I said, because of manipulation by the far right and the fact that nobody talks sense when it comes to refugees means that people would and governments would be quite hostile to the idea. Yeah. So, I mean, for example, I mean, also the relocations offers from several countries were lower than expected. For example, in France, they offer to relocate around 6,700 people in the next two years, which is 2,000 less than before, and Poland, 100,100 instead of 2,000. So why this changing of mind, do you think, Mr. Klepp? Well, I think uh, the, idea, the, the reason why Germany suddenly and France were willing to take in less uh, people than they promised was uh, the frustration that some other countries were not willing to, to play ball on this. Uh, also, the fact that the mandatory... Uh, um, uh, relocation ID uh, has failed, as could be expected, of course. Now, um, I think we, we have to accept that there is a certain reality. And even if maybe it's true that the far right is playing up this, uh, pushing mainstream politicians in one direction, even if we could convince Europe's people to take in three, four, five times as refugees as they do currently, you will agree that we still haven't solved the problem because it's gigantic demand. So uh, I would really warn for uh, trying to, to, to achieve impossible things which will not even be uh, sufficient instead of thinking about alternative. Why don't we uh, host welcoming centers uh, Somewhere at Europe's borders, I know in, in, uh, in Niger, the EU is now having a pilot project with this. Why don't we try to then avoid that these welcoming centers degrading to horrible refugee camps, uh, but become like uh, uh, stable places with rule of law? The okay. EU has some experience um, in that in, in Kosovo. Sorry, I have to interrupt you because we have to go on with, uh, with the program. So Spain will take uh, more than uh, 1,300 refugees. And... Uh, Actually, we have one question coming from Spain, Andrea, from Radio Castian Ion. It's a UNET Plus network member. We listen. Hi, hello from Spain. Our country is one of the European states that receive less refugees requests, but the Spanish interior minister has said that the system for allocating quotas of refugees is like having a leak in a house, and instead of fixing it, you decide to share water in different rooms. After this shameful statement, it is really so difficult for European institutions to force countries as Spain to accept more refugees. Mrs. Islam? I don't like the idea of forcing countries to accept. I think that there is no way you can force. You have to change mindsets. Uh, I think you can't just come up with an idea like this and accept countries that are hostage to the far right and hostage to very xenophobic uh, uh, sentiments and also in the midst of a very severe economic crisis. All of this gets mixed up in a very toxic mixture, you know. And if you are going to... Only a well, exactly. I mean, this is, a, this is such a numbers game. And I think really we're trying to distract from the real issues that are out there, which is, as I said in the beginning, Europe's fear and Europe's hostility towards the outside world and people deemed to be refugees coming in. Europe needs immigrants. Europe needs young labor. Europe is desperate for skills and talent. All the people in the world who are talented are going to Canada, America, Australia, and sometimes also to the UK. But we need your uh, immigrants. Okay. And we are rejecting those who are coming in. It's ironical. Hungary so refused to accept any relocation of refugees on its own. And related to this, we have a question on Facebook. Lenka wrote, if we had these quotas, would it avoid that Mr. Orban, the Hungarian prime minister, built his shame wall on the border with Serbia? Mr. Klepp. Yes, of course. Also, Bulgaria has built a fence. It should not be for uh, forgotten. So, um, uh, I mean, look, again... I applaud all the efforts to try to uh, change the minds of, um, of Europe's people. It's absolutely true that w in Europe we need more um, uh, immigration, uh, quality immigration, not uh, to seek benefits but to contribute to, to society. We therefore need to change our social system also, I think. Uh, but uh, it would be uh, naive and it would be a lie uh, to say that this would sort the problem. We are facing a problem of enormous magnitude here. And there is no way that uh, any country in the world will ever be convinced to take in um, 
all the people that actually want to flee all, not only the wars, but just the horrible economic situation, which is a perfectly legitimate reason to move. So as long as we don't uh, discuss real proper alternative, apart from the fictional idea that we're going to suddenly convince the mainstream, uh, then I think we will basically not help all these people. So maybe uh, one of the solutions is reforming the Dublin system of sending asylum seekers back to the country where they enter, maybe... This is not working. And actually, a comment on Facebook comes from Giorgio, who wrote, Why should Italy be the only country that manages migrants arriving in Europe? And we go now to Italy with uh, Gigi from Radio 24, who's got a question for you both as well. Hello, everybody from Italy. I'm Gigi Donelli, and my question is the following. Italy is now the most significant entry point for migrants in Europe, with 170,000 asylum seekers, refugee and migrants arriving by sea in 2014, with arrivals to date in 2015 outpacing the prior year. The Dublin system, along with uh, being uh, often inhuman, is also inefficient. Eurostat data shows that while it has a detrimental impact on human lives, as well as on cost to member states, its effectiveness is extremely limited. Do you think that time has really come to overcome the Dublin system? Do you think that the recent agreement joined in Brussels about the distribution of more than 30,000 refugee, migrants and asylum seekers is the turning point of the European policy concerning migration. Thank you very much. Mrs. Um, Islam, yeah. do we need an alternative for Dublin system? I think the Dublin system is broken. I mean, uh, Gigi said it very clearly himself. It's inefficient, it's inhuman, and it really needs an overhaul. Now, my question is, in the current climate, do member states have the political courage required to undertake a real overhaul of the system. I hope they are. In any case, the world has moved on since the Dublin Convention. The world is now a very different place from what it was 10, 20, 15 years ago. And I think when we do talk about a new system, we have to take into account the whole issue of managed immigration. Europe doesn't have an immigration policy. And that's one of the reasons that we're faced with this tragedy, this crisis every day. If we had a proper immigration policy, I think a lot of the issues that Peter talks about would be solved because we'd be dealing with it in a rational, systematic way, going into the countries of origin, have, making sure that there is development there, making sure that poverty issues are dealt with, making sure that the smugglers, because this is human traffickers, right? I mean, that, that system, that chain of smuggling is broken. It's a whole new concept, and I do hope uh, Eora comes up with it, because a lot is at stake. What would be the solution for you, Mr. Klepp? So, focusing on the root causes... Yes, well, um, migration is an extremely sensitive issue, and I think um, in every country that's the case. So I think it would be dangerous to outsource it uh, to to uh, to the European level, because then, of course, the EU level would have the power to force countries to take in uh, people, and this would not create a sustainable basis for support for migration. So I think if you're pro-migration, I think it may be dangerous to to give the EU uh, this this power. Uh, now, um, it's true that Italy takes in a lot of people, but uh, the Belgian government has, for example, pointed out that Italy and Greece uh, take care of it for a few weeks, but then a lot of these people are, are going to the north of Europe. So um, if you look in the last 20 years, then you can see that a lot of migration has already happened. But again, if you're asking for a fundamental solution, I think you have to accept that there's a limit, uh, rightly or wrongly, uh, among the population in Europe and everywhere else in the world, I would like to stress, uh, about taking in uh, people from a very different culture. On the other hand, it's perfectly uh, legitimate that people want to flood wars and, uh, and uh, economic poverty. So thereby, I think many uh, NGOs, like for example Amnesty, they are against some, some kind of the outsourcing of yes. the problem, okay. trying to Just have welcoming outside of, 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 the, of the West. But I do think this could be actually a realistic, sustainable mm. solution as a, opposed to Um, like Just make it shortly, sorry, that, uh, because we have to yeah. cut uh, sorry, <laughs> this. Yeah. 
Yeah, so yeah, your last word, but really shortly, then we have to end up the program. I, I was pretty much done, but I think uh, if we uh, if we keep on uh, banging our heads against the wall about how uh, selfish people are and and, uh, and how they're not willing to take in more people, we're not getting anywhere. We're not actually helping all these people. On the other hand, if we think about, let's have welcoming centers somewhere in places like Morocco, Niger, Libya, that we can sort of secure. We'll have an <laughs> EU rule of law mission like the EU has done in Kosovo. It's not going to be perfect, but uh, as long as we can offer a better place for refugees than where they're coming from, we would have already thank a success. You, Mr. Klepp, thank you, uh, for coming. Thank you, Mrs. Islam, for coming. And sorry to interrupt you, but we have to end it up the program. So see you next time for another You Talking to Me. 